So this poor thing has been sitting for over a year. Yep. We were trying to get the brakes going. We we're doing a rear end job on it. We never did finish because we were missing some tools. And we just ran out of, I guess, momentum on it. Finally got the tools. Finally got the tools. So after sitting for a year, we got a little jumper because the battery's no good. We're going to start it up. Mm -hmm. Fire it up. And welcome back to Buff's Garage. We're gonna get this 2004 Avalanche moved out of the garage. We gotta throw it back together, bleed the brakes, and then it's out of here. In the meantime, we still got the Trans Am over here just waiting. And then we need to move on to our 1994 Suburban. After about 250,000 miles, I think the transmission's starting to act up, so we need to work on that. So stay tuned, let's get this Avalanche out of here. So if you've been watching our channel at all, you know that we have a 2004 Avalanche right here. Right now, it's not reliable. It's got an issue. We believe it to be the rear end and uh, not sure what's going on with it, but we're going to start the teardown and hopefully figure out not only what's wrong, but what we got to do to fix it. Here we go. What I'm going to do right now is crawl into the back end. I'm sure it's not going to be too hard, but won't know until I get into it. Let's deal with the valley. The hills kept the same. But don't you know, you got wild blood running through your veins. You're the leader of the wolf pack with the power of flame. Don't you know, you got wild blood, wild blood running through your veins. of investigating and see what we got going on to go any further we have to get these wheels off That took more effort than I want. So now we have to pull this brake caliper and rotor off. That'll get us to our axle. Once we unclip it in there, we should be able to pull it out. From everything I've seen, we have to pull the sway bar and this uh, track bar along the back.
So this truck's got about, right about 200,000 miles on it. It spent a large portion of its life in Arizona before I purchased it. And then it spent many years in Alaska. And contrary to popular belief, the vehicle wasn't that rusty for its entire time up there. But it sat out in my yard in Kansas. And this is what it looks like. Kansas is a very humid state, at least the eastern portion, and that moisture just collects on everything. Plus, I'm pretty sure they use some kind of salt mixture on the roads, which makes it worse. So, it's all surface stuff, but it's still ugly compared to what it was. So, a couple hundred thousand miles or so, these... Uh, all rusty and falling apart the other side over there is worse than this one but we got some uh, replacement kits i remember who i got this from just dorman but first we gotta work on the rear end so that sad sight right there is what I believe to be the pinion bearing going out. So I'm gonna do my first ever rear end upgrade. I'm gonna try to do it right because it's a good truck. I don't want it to just be thrown together. So here we go. All right. Be my first time to we'll see what it what it takes to get it done. to get those little clips out they're being a pain usually you can put a magnet on them and get them out 
I'm not having that success. I'm gonna try the old grabber tool. I don't think it's gonna be small enough. Nope. All right, try something else. All right, put some light in here for you to see what we're going for. Got surgical gloves because I got the surgical tools out. Usually you can magnet these clips out, but mine don't want to come out. Give a few more wax on the axle, push it, push it in this way a little bit. Find a place to put this so you can see. All right, there's the back. And there she was. All right, now we can pull the axles out. And then that big old sucker will come out and we'll start trying to figure out why it's making noises. We got the C-clips out. Ooh, they're there. And we're about to pull the axle shafts out. That should give us enough clearance to get the center out. And hopefully we can figure out what, what isn't working. In case I didn't say it before, truck has 200,000 miles. It's been sitting for quite a while, over a year, maybe longer, because we started to hear a noise from the drivetrain and a shutter. Check the U-joints, and we are going to replace them. However, I'm not sure that's what it was. So, stuck the old pinky in the rear end and seemed bone dry. Now, my bucket here, we had a little bit in there, but I also tried to top it off afterwards, after I heard the noise. And so some of that might be that, but it's pretty black, it smells horrible. Not that it smelled good to begin with, but I'm guessing it got a little hot. So the bearings are probably shot probably giving us that shutter and the uh, pinion bearing but we're gonna take this out see if we can figure it out all right so bad. Not getting a lot of play. 
I might have done all this for nothing. But 200,000 miles, it's not going to hurt to freshen it all up. And then we can get back to finding what the real root of the problem is. Hmm. Fun. All right, so we want to clean the rest of this gasket off. So I had to go get a uh, top quality gasket scraper. Only the best. And by that, I mean, I found this by the road when I was checking the mail. That means I like to recycle. That looks about brand new. Oh, hello. Welcome to Buff's Garage. As you can see, it's kind of messy right now. And we've got this project, and we've got this project over here, both that need to go out. So we got more projects coming in. So join me as we get this 2004 Avalanche cleaned up, back together, and out of the garage. Cut. So here it is, February. We have snow on the ground. And it's 70 degrees out. Welcome to Kansas. And be sure to like and subscribe.
Got the new backing plates installed. Did the old Craigslist rebuild, freshened it up a little bit. Got the axles put back in. We got the diff cover back on, sealed up, torqued to spec. Hopefully uh, everything holds up. It wouldn't be much of a rebuild if we didn't go ahead and replace these U-joints as well. So we picked up a new set at Napa. We're gonna pull these U-joints out and get them replaced. So on these GMT 800s, there really is a difference in the U-joints. Uh, some of them, like my GMT 400 will have a U-joint with a clip that goes on the inside. And as I understand with these, they have a clip that's on the inside here. So I've not taken one of these apart before, but we're gonna give it a shot. I do have a uh, ball joint compressor tool, and of course there's always a big hammer. So yeah, you can watch me struggle as I get these apart.
things a little easier. I went ahead and used a little bit of my lubricating spray on all these U-joints. They've been in there a long time and they're pretty rusted in. They don't want to move. And looking at the new ones, I'm going to have to get them to move to be able to get to the clips along there. Let me show you. So the new U-joints here, it's got this groove. And here's one. And these clips fit into that groove. Well, on our U-joint, it's rusted solid. So I can't even get to where these clips are without doing a little bit of hammer work. So I personally don't care what brand you use, but I grew up with Aerocroil. Uh, WD-40 was available, but this is what dad kept in the shop. And honestly, I got used to the smell. It's kind of pleasant, but it also works really, really well. So that's what I use. So we're gonna let that penetrating uh, oil work a little bit and got our ball joint removal tool. I'm gonna use that to uh, compress these. I'll show you how I use this. Slides on like this. Cinch her down. So I've changed U-joints before, but I've never changed these style of U-joints. Something wasn't right. Did a little bit of research and realized I need some firepower. This is a 200,000 mile avalanche. Those are original U-joints. No wonder it's making noise. So it's time for some fire. marshmallows on that all right we're done playing with fire for a moment Let's see if we can get this out
All right, we got this U-joint to pop, and there went all the needle berries. All right, just so you get an idea of what we're looking at, it's this 200,000 mile U-joints. This is where I was trying to pry it back here to see if I could see the C-clip, which, in brand new ones, this is plastic. And you actually have to melt it out. That's what I was doing with the torch. And then of course they popped off. There was a little bit of grease still left in there. But my new ones have a greaser. So I'm gonna heat up the torch and get these out and then we'll work on the other side. So I figured out which one was bad. It 
truly. Just not much left. You can see how dry it was. Oh, and now it's on the ground. This side was still wet, had some grease. This side's bone dry. So now we know what was causing our problem. So we had multiple issues with the rear end on our avalanche. We know that the rear end bearings were not great and at 200,000 miles, it was time to change them out. So with Sarah's help, we got those bearings out and then working on U joints. I think I found the source of our clunk was not the pinion bearing, although it did get changed. It was this U joint. Now it's time to get after these U joints. So first things first, we're gonna prep this drive shaft, get it cleaned up a little bit, get the new U joints in and get it back in the truck. We're recording inside today because the wind is ridiculous out there. It's Kansas. Two days ago it was snowing. Now it's 80 and windy. So here we go. shaft back from paint and body just kidding spritzed a little paint on it just to freshen it up in fact it's still wet but we're not gonna let that hold us up so I went ahead and installed this end onto the drive shaft it's important to remember which end this came off of and I don't know if you noticed earlier but I did mark some blue on the other end so I could remember which end was which I knew I'd be cleaning it up but I didn't know I'd be painting it but I thought what the heck throw a little paint on it, make it look nicer, put it back underneath the uh, truck and let it look rusty later. So went ahead and installed these. I'm gonna show you an up close as to how these clips work. Right inside here is a little C-clip that holds this U-joint in place. There's one on each side. This U-joint also came with a grease cirque. So we can keep these greased and hopefully running another 200,000 miles. All right, let's get on to the other side and show you how these go in. No.
Now very carefully remove one side and inside there's going to be some needle bearings and they already have grease in there holding them in but you still want to be careful you don't want to lose them but you need to take one off to be able to get the u-joint to seat into here okay now that we got our u-joint seated on this side we just need to put our cap with the needle bearings on there and I use my ball joint tool with my ball joint tool I will press this in so that it's uh, seated on this side we'll put our c-clip in and then we'll check the clearance on this side and put the c-clip in on this side and we'll be done All right, so our goal is to get our C-clip right into that notch. Here's our C-clip. We're gonna set it right there. And tap it with the hammer. Knock it in. There we go. Check it all the way around. It's in there. So we'll finish cranking this down just a little further. And it's on there. All right. We got our U-joint in place. And because we're not installing it right this second, I'm going to go ahead and put some tape around these other caps so we don't lose our needle bearings. Overkill, I know, but I don't wanna to have to pick these up. I'm setting you up for cool weather. If that sun breaks after you're out on the highway, you're liable to get real loose real quick. Now, I don't want to worry you or nothing, but Sarah, she's not ready for that. She's changed, see? She's changed. You cannot get out of control and just expect her to bring you right back. She's liable to hurt you. You're liable to hurt her. And I... I couldn't handle that. So, uh, so you gotta take care of her. See? You gotta take care of her. This is not the answer I'm looking for from you. Well, that was fun. Channeling my inner Robert Duvall. <sighs> After all that work, my pinion seal's leaking. So now we're gonna be pulling this back apart, just a little, see if we can put the new seal that I just ordered and got in, in there and maybe that'll stop the leak. And then, then we're going to be done. Maybe. Well, as it turns out, 
this little dude is my problem. So this is a crush washer, and it's supposed to help you set your uh, preload, your tension, as it were, on your pinion bearing. The whole pinion itself, it gives you some back and forth movement, and you don't want that. So this, if you set the uh, tension on it just right, will give you that proper spacing between the bearings and will keep your seals from leaking. It'll also help you set your lash on your rear pinion gear. Unfortunately, over tightened mine. So I went online and I found this kit. And in this kit is this spacer and some shims. And those will replace this crush washer. The idea being that you can be out on the trail or on the side of the road, basically, and you can pull those bearings out and replace them without having to have another crush washer and without having to figure out what your uh, tension is on your pinion. So we're going to give this a shot and see if it's going to work for us. I apparently am not good at getting the tension just right on this. So this was the fix. Let's see if it works. So that's going to be it for this episode. Understand, it will run, it will drive. We're going to replace that seal first and then we'll get it out of here. And I will post an update when I'm done. But for now, I'm going to go back to work. We're going to wait on those new uh, pinion seals to show up. Hopefully the right size this time. And then we'll get it out of here. I want to thank everybody for watching. Until next time.